Hey, Griddle Nation. We are back. We're sorry for the technical difficulties, but we're going to get started right where we left off. So, buddy, let's go. Clearly, we're having too much fun with this pizza party today. Andrew tossed his dough up into the air, and we lost you. But I challenged Jen to try to toss up her dough to see if she could do it better than Andrew. Let me see. Let me see, Jen. Can you do it? You better be clear. <laughs> Up in the air. Do you want to do it one more time? Like that? Yes. Like gonna, like, Can we see you do it one more time? I feel like you want to do it. Like you really enjoy the pizza party. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> okay. Now that we've got all of our good, we've, before we lost connection, we sprinkled a little bit of semolina over our peels. If you feel like you need a little bit more, just go for it. And then you could use your hands, slide that dough up on to your peel. We're gonna make sure we have semolina everywhere around it so that it slides. If you can feel it like this with a little shimmy shake of your wrist, it's sliding, it's not stuck. We're good to go. Let's slide it out just for a second. For the pizza today, now that we've stretched our dough to perfection, we are making a, we're calling it a pickleback pizza, I think. Unless somebody out there can come up with a better name. We love pickles on our pizza. I don't know if you guys do, but we do. Pickles, chicken, bacon, and a, some mozzarella cheese. We've got ranch dressing. And of course, to marry those all together, we've got our Blackstone Parmesan Ranch seasoning, which we all just love. So grab your little cutting boards and your sharp Blackstone knife. If you like the way the chicken is, as is, this is some pre-cooked chicken that we griddled up on the Blackstone griddle, which is fabulous that you can connect your Blackstone griddle cooking to all of your pizza toppings and have them ready to go. If you like them big like this, I like them a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna chop them up. You guys have your knives and your cutting board in front of you in case you wanna chop them up. We can even just hand rip it. it it's pizza, have fun with it. I'm just gonna roughly chop up my chicken and the same goes for your pickles. If you guys wanna chop up your pickles or leave them whole, it's completely up to you. Your pizza is like a canvas. Make it however you want, really. I'm just giving you guys the ingredients. I've got my chicken, we've got some pickles. We're gonna chop these up too because, or do I want them whole? I never know. I like doing my pizzas different every time in the pizza oven. I like getting creative with the toppings, making it look different every single time. I'm gonna go for a bigger chop than the last time I made a pickle pizza. And once you have your toppings, our bacon also was griddled on the Blackstone griddle. Anybody notice anything about that bacon by any chance? It's a little dark on the darker side. It's not perfect because Yusuf griddled it. <laughs> I just wanted to give Yusuf a shout out and thank him for the beautiful bacon. But if you do um, make any of your toppings griddled on the griddle, he's gonna, I know, he's back there probably. <laughs> but uh, for your toppings, if you were to griddle bacon, it's gonna go into the pizza oven. So you would want your bacon or your toppings to be on the like 80 to 90% done, not exactly crispy how you would normally want it. That way it has a chance to crisp up in the pizza oven. Your chicken, obviously you want that to be fully cooked. You don't want to pre-cook chicken, put your toppings away and have it raw, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, first goes down for this pickleback pizza, we have our ranch. We've got a bottle of ranch. We've got our pizza ready to launch into our pizza oven. Our stones are nice and hot and we will tempt them in just a second. First topping for this, since we're not using a sauce for this pizza, is our ranch. Do a little drizzle do a little drizzle. I was worried that it wasn't open and it's not. A little drizzle all the way around. I feel like it's gonna come. Is yours coming out? I might need to borrow your bottle. Borrow yeah, I think. <laughs> Andrew, thank you. I'm gonna borrow yours. Okay, a little drizzle of our ranch. There we go. And then you guys have a little metal spoon. Add as much ranch as you want. Spread it around. This is the sauce for this pickle, back, chicken, bacon, ranch, pizza. Next up would be our cheese. We've got some shredded mozzarella cheese. You guys, pizza's looking good. Nobody has any questions yet. Everybody's good. Everybody's good with all these toppings, having fun, having a pizza party, over the top with our cheese. Try not to get too much cheese on. Oh, 
usually I do do this on the table. You can dress your pizza on the peel or off the peel. It's completely up to you. Just make sure you don't get any of those toppings like the ranch. You wouldn't want that on your peel because it might stop you from launching correctly. We've got cheese. I go a little bit light because we're gonna do toppings and then maybe a little bit more cheese in the empty spots. This is the fun part. You guys have free range to decorate your pizza any way you want. If you wanna do a lot of pickles or a lot of chicken, in any order you want, add bacon and your pickles and your chicken. I'm gonna go down first with chicken. Just because it's the bigger of the ingredients, I want that bacon not to get hidden under there. You wouldn't risk burning anything except for the bacon if the bacon was overly <laughs> cooked. Um, so no, your cheese, as long as I always say hand shred your cheese and then it will allow your cheese to cook a little bit longer than a pre-bagged cheese because it has an additive in that pre-shredded bag of cheese which prevents caking but then it doesn't give you that beautiful melt and it just cooks faster in your pizza oven. You'll notice your pizza's having more of a brown cheese instead of that ooey gooey melty cheese that you hand shred it. All right, and then pickles and bacon. That was a good question. Bacon, how's yours looking? Are we loving the topping combination? Okay. Are they? Now, do you? what, what are your favorite kinds of pickles? Bread and butter, okay. I love the dill. Yes, true. <laughs> Make sure while you're adding your toppings every few seconds, since we did dress these on here, that you have that shimmy shake still so that nobody loses their launch game, okay? I saved the parsley that's on our table for the end. So this is about enough, except maybe just a little extra cheese I'm gonna do. And once we have all that done, one last step of stretching our pizza. You wanna use your fingertips under your pizza and then just pull out ever so slightly and make sure this is how we get that extra inch around the outside of our pizza. This looks good. If for any reason you wanna push out some of those toppings because you get a little extra dough once you do that, that's all you have to do is just move it out, or you can add more if you want it to. Now that everybody's pizza looks good, should I go around and look? I need to see how everybody's pizza's doing. Kayla, I feel like you're a perfectionist. <laughs> Jamin, it looks gorgeous. You're heavy on the cheese. You like the cheese. You like mm -hmm. extra cheese. I like it. You're just a pro. Are you going to? No? No? <laughs> you guys all look good. Okay. The fun part is after this pizza comes out with a little extra decoration which we'll get to, but let's check our pizza stones and make sure that these are ready. Using your instant read thermometer, turn it on, and then checking your temp of the actual stone. We are at 772 degrees, which is great. I am now gonna turn down my heat to low because I want my pizza to cook a little bit longer. What's yours reading at? 547. Good, how about you guys? Good. We all feel good about this. If you want to lower your temperature, if you want to, if you want to cook it at high, it's up to you. I like to go a little bit longer because I like a charred pizza. And so I kind of go for a longer cook, although the pizza oven can cook a pizza in literally 60 to 90 seconds. Are we feeling good about this? We're all, the pizzas are moving, right? A little shimmy shake. Who's gonna go first over here? Andrew. Andrew, okay. As you know, the pizza oven has the beautiful two stone technology, which is gonna make sure that this pizza cooks evenly and perfectly. And we have the rotating stone, which means we can walk away and hang out and enjoy our guests while we're making a pizza. So when we're launching, we wanna turn this spinning rotation off so that we can launch without messing up our pizza, slide it in there with a little flick of the wrist and turn that pizza oven back on to continue rotating. Are you ready to do yours? <laughs> How did yours go? You're nervous? Yes. It's shaking, right? It's, it's shaking, it's shimmying. Yes. So it's gonna slide right off. You turned off your stone, get it back there in the far back. Perfect. You did it. <laughs> I mean, 
There's no need to be nervous. I mean, if you mess up, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You have to make another pizza. Then you can just have more fun. So everybody's pizza's in. Our stones are turning. Yours is on high. We're gonna see, just keep an eye on it. Mine is on low. It's cooking perfectly. We have two more pizzas to launch in. Do we have any questions or any questions out there in Griddle Nation? Michael's got a question for us coming in from Griddle Nation, which I love. Um, we just have a question. If you would cook a frozen pizza instead of making your own, would you need to thaw it first? Oh, that's a great question, Michael, because I've never actually cooked a frozen pizza, but we do have CJ who has an episode that um, he showed cooking on our Blackstone YouTube channel, cooking a frozen pizza, comparing it to him cooking a copycat of the frozen pizza. And I do not think that he thought it. I don't think you have to. It can go right in there. Um, I would just probably, if it was me, if I had a frozen pizza, let it go lower and slower. That way it might need a little extra time. But we can always ask CJ that question. Yep. And then we have a second question. Um, if you could recap kind of the stretching of the dough so that um, the people that missed it just kind of go over that one more time. The stretching of the dough, great question. Once we have our dough balls made and they are ready to be stretched out, using your fingertips, you just want to start at the center, create a nice crust around the outside and continue using either your fingertips, the palms of your hands, or even gravity using your fist the way that Andrew just mastered. Toss it in the air. The more pizzas you make, the more fun you make, the better you get at this, the better your pizzas or stretching is gonna be. I like it well done. I'm gonna keep going just one more second. I, I, that's just me. Before I do take it out, I, I just dust off all that extra semolina so that you don't get it on your pizza. Turn off our rotating stone and pull it out. I am a well done person. I like it. I like it. How's yours? Yours has a lot of bubbles. And that can happen if when stretching your dough, a lot of that air doesn't get pushed out towards the side, creating that crust, or maybe over touching and overworking <laughs> your dough. <Still> now. <laughs> Jen's the professional now. But it's still edible and it still looks delicious and it still looks uniquely yours. And some people love bubbles on theirs. I know my kids fight over who gets the biggest bubble piece. So roll with it. Um, to finish these off, yours is finished. You guys want to get your pizzas launched in? Should we watch them launch their pizza? Let's go over here and see. Jamin launch her pizza. We're going to turn off the rotating stone with a little flick of the wrist all the way in the back. She's going to get it in. And you did great. Turn it back on. How do you feel about that? Easy, Good. easy peasy, right? I mean, it can't be any easier. And that semolina really helps it just slide in. How did you just do? <laughs> Michael has another question from Griddle Nation, which is my favorite. Come on, Michael, before we dress this pizza up with a little extra. Okay, so Shalane, I hope I'm saying that, Anderson said, are you using raw dough to do a pr and or do you pre-bake it first? I struggle getting raw dough off the metal peel. So she wants to know if we're using raw dough. Can I see her name? Sh Shalane. Shalane, yes. that is a great question. Whether you want to use a dough that you buy from a store or a dough that you make, like the one that we just made in the last live, or you want to buy a pizza crust that's already made, you can do any of those. If you're struggling with the launching of your raw dough into your pizza oven, I suggest either using uh, the combination of the semolina and flour, dust it on your peel, or you can use a pizza screen and build your pizzas on a pizza screen. This will help you get used to launching and then eventually you move away from the, the um, screen and then you are just a perfectionist at it eventually. Or what I like to do is play with some store-bought pre-made dough that's already baked, even if it's a practice with a thin tortilla, launching it in the pizza oven. It's just really, I think, getting the right combination of your flour and semolina onto your peel that works best with whatever kind of dough you're working. Because you don't want, if it's a very hydrate or a very wet dough, you're going to have a little bit harder time. So work with a pizza screen. 
Okay, are you guys ready to decorate this? So I have your um, ranch. What I like to do to finish this off, because we want to zhuzh up everything, would be to use our Blackstone seasoning, our Parmesan ranch, a little parsley for color, and your ranch seasoning or ranch dressing. And you can do this. This is my fun part. I love letting other people do this. Either a circle, either little lines, zigzags, crisscrosses, whatever you want to finish that pizza presentation, do it. So I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go into a circle. Or should I do crisscrosses? I never know. I'm just going to go into a little circle and finish it. And this is where your pizza ends up looking like it came from. Let me give this to Andrew. It comes, Jen, that looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks good. And then you're going to zhuzh it up. And we do a post us, which is always a must if you ask CJ, with our Parmesan ranch. A very light seasoning over the top just brings this to another level. You could even add more pickles if you want it to. Get funky with it, get crazy with it, make it a party. And I always have to add, I don't know if this is the Italian in me, but something green on top. I love the parsley flakes on top. And that's it, that's a pickle pizza. I think we're naming it a pickleback pizza. Michael has another question for me from Griddle Nation. I love that you guys are asking questions. from YouTube it says how did you learn how to make pizzas Betty how did I learn how to make pizzas who's that from um, dr. moo 65 on YouTube dr. moo 65 off of YouTube um, great question I have learned to make pizza back in the day uh, my grandparents have a beach house and they had a garden and we would cook pizzas every weekend down the shore watching my grandparents cook them with their garden vegetables and peppers and all that stuff late night family pizza parties and it was a little bit different than we are making them today because we I, they would have they would have loved to have this technology in their house we did not have this we did them in their oven so relearning throughout the pizza oven um coming out within Blackstone, we're all kind of learning together at the same time and playing. I'm not a pro, but the more and more and more we play and the more you learn about Joe, you, you educate yourself and just watch other owners, we're all learning together. And that's why we call it a pizza party because we're all having a pizza party together. And I think this looks way better than one of the first pizzas I've made. This I'd be happy with. I mean, this if you went to a restaurant, you'd probably pay $25 for it, maybe 20, maybe not that much. I mean, I'm not giving myself a little bit more credit, but yes, ordering a pizza out, it's way too expensive, way too expensive. When my family's over, we order pizzas for pizza night. We put up about $150 for pizza. It's crazy. This has already paid for itself. So it's worth every single penny to me and my family. We, we make pizzas for probably two, $3. Four dollars if you want to get really bougie. Did you guys all decorate? Michael, <laughs> with another question from my favorites. Look at this okay, pizza so though. We have two questions for you. Um, Danny Marino on YouTube said, "What are your favorite toppings for pizza?" My favorite toppings for pizza, Danny. Great question. Well, I love getting as creative as possible and pairing different flavors. At home, a pickle pizza ends with some crushed up salt and vinegar chips. It sounds crazy, but really, if you have dough made like we just made it and then going through your cabinets, you might have not gone shopping to make a pizza, but you decide to have a pizza night, you just go and rummage through your own stuff. I love meats. I love um, Italian meats on my pizza. I love doing like a, this sounds really weird, but we do pasta on top of our pizza at home. A, a vodka sauce pizza with the vodka, pasta on top, uh, a chicken parm pizza, my fig and prosciutto pizza is one of my favorites. It's on YouTube. I like all the pizzas. And then your Nene. Oh, hey Nene. Asked, um, Betty, how is the pizza oven at making deep dish pizza? Nene, you know I love my deep dish pizza. That's a great question. 
I haven't really tested out making the deep dish pizza in this specific pizza oven. I did just do a focaccia bread, load it with onions that I posted, and it worked perfectly. You know that I love our 22 inch pizza oven for the deep dish pizzas. I love it for the grandma style pizzas, those thicker crust. And it actually worked just as well making the focaccia. I will be going home though and testing that next. I already said that is the next thing I am testing in here. The fact that you can do anything and it rotates itself helped to really cook it evenly without having, I didn't have to go in and rotate it as I do on the other 22 inch. But anything on a sheet pan works in here. Fish, steak, crab cakes, dip. Somebody made uh, pretzels in the pizza oven in griddle nation we have just there's tons of things you can cook in it fish is probably one of my favorites i love a fish as much as i love fish on the griddle it can be a little tricky to flip a piece of fish like a delicate piece of fish on the griddle so cooking it in a sheet pan in this pizza oven in seconds getting that char on it that you really love it's perfect thank you nene what <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Oh, we're going to cut it. Yes. Good question. <laughs> Everybody's m miming to me in the background. I Just talk to me. Let's go. They want to cut their pizza. They want to eat it. We want to enjoy it. So I'm using the new Blackstone rolling pizza cutter. I keep thinking that this comes off, which I love that it doesn't. It slides in and hides itself so that we don't have to worry about losing that little piece. Or you can use your Blackstone rocker. Either one, cut into it, and let's see how you guys did. Let's check out the bottom. It was so pretty, I wasn't ready to cut into it. <laughs> All right, cut big pieces, little pieces, whatever you want. I also don't think that it matters how you cut your pizza. We're not, okay, that looks good. All right, you guys ready? Jen's laughing, how's your pizza? Here, why don't you try the rolling pizza cutter? This one, I just love. Cut it. So just I think it looks good. I mean, yeah. It looks good. I love the bubbles. I'm going to have to steal a piece of yours and eat it. <laughs> I want to see the bottom of that pizza crust. So Let's see. It all in. Oh my gosh. Look at the bottom of that. Is that all right? It's perfect. Yours looks perfect. Yours looks perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let me see yours. Are you happy with it? Very. I can't wait for you guys to taste it. <laughs> yours looks perfect too. I cannot wait to taste it. Okay, ready? That's it. It's restaurant style or restaurant, restaurant quality pizza in seconds. I mean, how long do they take to cook? A minute. A minute. It's crazy. Okay, enjoy it guys. Thanks for coming and hanging out and having another pizza party with me. We've got one more pizza party coming up and I cannot wait. That's it. You guys have to try the pickleback pizza, go. Mm. I love the combination. What do you think? Good. At home, guys, try the combination. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. Good. We're out. We're done.